back, taking a little break from our lectures now to uh, have a little bit of a plug here for the university, as well as Victor Rashio Christie. Uh, we're going to have a, uh, a representative of Crandall Admissions come up, uh, Mrs. Angela Pattison. She is going to come up and share about the university. And uh, it's a really is a great school, and I'm not just saying that because I graduated from here and work here and paid to say stuff like that, but it really is a great school, and uh, Angela is going to come up and share a bit about why that is the case. And uh, then we are going to have a special treat after that and have one of our mature Crandall students, Mark McEwen, who is also a Ratio uh, Christie student, come up and share a bit about his experience being part of both those worlds. So, Angela, welcome. Good morning. My name is Angela Patterson, like Cody was saying, and I'm an admissions counselor and recruiter for Crandall University. Um, I was speaking with Cody before this. Um, I've never been to one of these events before, and I wasn't quite sure what the demographic would be, but I'm normally recruiting high school students, so this, um, this presentation is kind of catered towards that. Um, but most of the students in this room have already been recruited and are already Crandall attendees. Um, however, we all know students that are coming up of that age, family members, children, grandchildren, who are thinking about where they'd like to go for university. So the hope is that you're able to take some of the information from this presentation and bring that to them um, and just kind of show them what a Christian post-secondary education could be like at Crandall. So Crandall University was founded by dedicated Christians in 1949 and has always been open to um, students who meet our academic requirements for admission. Crandall is the largest faith-centered university north of Boston and east of Toronto. At Crandall, students find a safe and caring community with professors and staff who, faith who seek to faithfully live the Christian life um, as examples to students. Um, so we're a faith-based liberal arts university, which means that we offer the typical Bachelor of Arts degrees in English, Psychology, Sociology, History, Communication and Theatre Arts, as well as Biblical and Religious Studies. We offer a Bachelor of Business Administration and a Bachelor of Science as well. But what's not so typical about our university is how we're able to integrate faith into learning. All traditional undergraduate students will have the opportunity to explore the content of the Christian faith through a minor in religious studies that they acquire at, at their time here at Crandall. Um, in other degree programs, the basics of the Christian faith are also explored. Um, so our Masters of Organizational Management or our degree completion program, as well as the Bachelor of Education. So we're a small school as far as universities go. We have about 850 students across all of our programs. So that includes undergraduate and graduate studies. Um, but uh, we like it that way. Our numbers enable um, students and professors to build a relationship um, and uh, just to get to know each other very quickly in this setting. Crandall students just aren't a number, um, like what happens to so many students at larger undergraduate programs. Our staff and faculty are really um, just set on their student success. Uh, so through support systems such as our um, faculty advisors, the Student Success Center, um, we have put support systems in place for students to be able to succeed while they're here at university. So in terms of our campus, as you are all aware, our campus is located in Moncton, New Brunswick. <laughs> um, I don't know if you've had a chance to explore the area this weekend. Um, but our campus is so bright and lively here. Um, you can't walk very far without running into someone that you know, um, and there's always something going on. We have a Crandall Student Association or um, a student council that puts on events for our students throughout the year um, and gives them the opportunity to connect and to just take a little break from studies um, in a safe and um, fun environment. We have great opportunities for students to be involved on campus and off campus. Um, with groups such as our major societies, worship teams, uh, our Crandall Student Association, as well as intramural sports. Um, Ratio Christie is an example of that, and Mark will be speaking to you a little bit more about that in a bit. Um, and we have several off-campus groups that we um, volunteer at with just to be a 
blessing towards our community. In terms of athletics, we have a variety of sports competing um, at a varsity level, such as men's and women's basketball, men's and women's soccer, women's volleyball, cross country, and we're actually the only um, place currently in Canada where you can compete in boxing at a varsity level. Um, we have a student as well as a member of the faculty in Mexico right now, I believe, are still there um, at a competition, so that's something new and exciting that we have going on at Crandall. Um, in terms of cost, just going to go over that a little bit because this is what parents are concerned about, right? <laughs> This is the important part. Uh, so this is a breakdown of tuition costs for the 2019-2020 year. Um, Crandall is the most affordably priced of the over 200 Christian universities in North America. Um, Crandall is not only competitively priced, but it also attracts excellent students from across the country um, and around the globe because of its generous scholarship and bursary program for traditional undergraduate students. Um, so entering high school applicants who possess an average of 70% or, oh sorry, 80% or higher are automatically eligible um, for a Board of Governors scholarship. And in, addi in addition, students who uh, volunteer with their community, um, their church are also eligible for um, further scholarships and awards. So there's so much I could tell you about Crandall, but I just really want to highlight specifically what an amazing and unique opportunity it is that Crandall University not only offers Bachelor of Arts degrees in Biblical Studies and Religious Studies, um, but degrees from a wide variety of fields from a Christian perspective. Um, you're able to deepen your faith and your knowledge of God while learning how to apply these things um, in your specific field. We know that it's so important for us to be able to bring our faith into our workplace eventually. Um, and Crandall University helps students accomplish this goal as well as many others. So thank you, Cody, for allowing me to be here today. And thank you for your attention. So thank you very much, Angela. Just gonna move this back over here. Uh, Mark, do you mind turning off the, turn, hitting the off button on the wall for the projector, please? You have to hit it twice, I think. Perfect, wonderful. So uh, Angela mentioned that we that uh, we really believe that we have an excellent uh, we have an excellent variety of programs here. We offer quality education here at Crandall, and I think that uh, evidence of that is the fact that some of your speakers for this weekend's symposium are relatively recent Crandall graduates including uh, Mark Hansen and Daniel Cooper, who are both working on their PhDs mm -hmm. through uh, McMaster Divinity College in Ontario. And it's a pleasure to have them here today, and uh, I think that that alone shows mm -hmm. the quality of uh, students we are producing here at the university. And I think another shining example would be the students I am going to introduce in just a couple of moments, Mark McEwen, who is in his third year now, right? Third year student doing, I'm gonna get this right, sociology and theology. Psychology. Psychology and theology, oh, the same thing. Anyway, uh, psychology and theology. He's doing two programs here, he's that much of a keener. And uh, he is also the student president of the Ratio Christi Club this year at Cranley University. And working in the ministry, I've always been told that nothing speaks to people like a solid testimony. And the nice thing about having Mark here today is that he is going to share what it's been like to be both a Crandall University student and a Ratio Christi student, to be a part of both of those worlds at the same time. So, and uh, I consider this to be very much a bit of a special treat. So I would like to invite Mark to come up and uh, let's uh, show him some welcome. <laughs> So Cody really set the bar really high there, so my apologies if I disappoint, but uh, I thought I'd start uh, by just telling you guys a little bit about who I am as a person. So uh, I'm 21, I was born in Ontario, grew up there, uh, went through the Christian high school thing, elementary school, you know, very, very sheltered life uh, uh, growing up. But uh, when I was in high school, my brother was recruited uh, at our high school event to Crandall University. They told him about this amazing 
uh, program where you could get one degree in theology and yet another one in uh, any of uh, Crandall's other programs. And I heard about it, it sounded great, and I did not want to do it. Uh, <laughs> my entire existence, I had been following my brother everywhere he went. Everyone knew <laughs> the McEwens, because that's the kind of student my brother was. And I, I just didn't want there to be a, uh, a uh, something attached to my name. I wanted to make a name for myself. Uh, but I looked around, and I couldn't find anything like it. Uh, not not anywhere in Canada, at least. And I'm like, well, looks like I'm gonna have to follow Nathan once again. So <laughs> <laughs> my brother did a degree in theology and biology, uh, and he's now doing his Masters of Divinity at Acadia, and I'm doing mine in theology and psychology, which it, it's similar to sociology in some ways, like they're both people. Uh, so yeah, Crandall is actually the only place I applied uh, which, a little risky of me, I know, but uh, there's really nowhere like it. Um, so coming to Crandall, uh, a lot of people say that university are the most formative years of your life, and uh, Crandall doesn't disappoint in this respect. I've grown uh, spiritually, mentally, and unfortunately a little bit physically in the wrong ways. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's been great for my walk with God and with others. Um, high school for me, although I went to a Christian high school, um, the teachers were Christian, but it didn't provide much opportunity for growth in my own spiritual life. I'd find that during the summers when I went to camp, I'd reach this spiritual high where I was really close in my relationship with God, and then in the school year, I'd, I'd hit these lows in my faith walk. And uh, when I came to Crandall, I just assumed that that's the way it worked, right? You know, camp's always this amazing spiritual experience, and school, well, you have other things to focus on, so you have to really fight for your relationship. But uh, my first year at Crandall, it actually became the opposite. Uh, my faith walk was so much stronger when I came here, and then at camp, I actually got a little bit of a dip in that area. Um, and this isn't just because of Crandall's theology, it's not because of uh, things like their programs, it's because of the people. Uh, people make the place, and Crandall really is all about that. Uh, anyone from the custodians to the tenured professors, they're all sold out for God. And not only do they teach you in the classes about what it is to live out of faith, but you see it in their lives. Um, so both for what they teach and how they live. Uh, but the people, the teachers aren't the only people at Crandall, neither are the faculty. You also have students. Uh, and if I could use one word to describe the Crandall students, uh, and there's so many that you could use to describe them, I definitely say diversity would be one of them. Uh, because we have students like myself from Ontario, uh, we have, like, there's actually a map in the, op uh, the international offices of just where all of our students are from, and it's just everywhere, right? From Africa, <coughs> from the Middle East, from so many places, and they all come to Crandall because there's something special uh, about it there. So, um, as a student, uh, the classes have been amazing. Uh, my faith has been incorporated into my psychology, and many people see them as at odds, actually. One thing that always happened when I told people that my brother was getting a degree in biology and theology is they're like, oh, aren't those like opposites? Mm -hmm. Like, don't those clash? And the answer was no, not at all. Uh, Nathan was able to use his love for the sciences, sciences and his love for God in a way and combine them uh, through Crandall's amazing programs here, people like Dr. Bushhouse and Dr. Brom. Um, and the same with psychology, and I'm assuming business and the sociology and so many others. Um, but one of the areas that's really close to my own heart when it comes to Crandall is um, <coughs> its extracurriculars, you know, the student life. Because uh, when you live here, you're living here, right? I don't have as many family connections here. I had my brother, but... Uh, um, now I don't, because he's elsewhere, but uh, when you come from a long way, the community and what you do with your spare time really matters. Um, so I've been involved in a lot of things, the Psychology Society, um, the 
Crandall Theater Program and so many other things. And they just all create such a wonderful community. And of course, not, that last, not least in that list is uh, the Ratio Christie Club. Mm -hmm. So growing up, I always loved apologetics. Um, I don't know how many of you know about Adventures in Odyssey, but when I was a small child, I'd listen to this Christian radio program. And then afterwards, you'd have this apologetics uh, program, and I just didn't bother to turn off the radio. But uh, that's when I first got my interest peaked in uh, apologetics and explaining the faith. Um, but as a child, I was a little legalistic, um, and that was a problem for me. So I loved learning these arguments, I loved crafting these arguments, uh, and I loved debate, but um, I didn't really do it with love. So I'd always go to these uh, various people and whatnot, uh, like uh, events, and I'd learn. But when it came to my sharing of my faith, uh, I was always on the defensive or on the attack, because that's uh, just what I learned from teaching myself some of the basics of apologetics, is making strong arguments and convincing people. Uh, when I came to Ratio Christi, on the other hand, um, one of the things that they really emphasized was love through how you communicate with others. Um, so it wasn't about me being right and the other people being wrong. Uh, it was all about how I communicate with people the basics of the faith, like not turning people away through how I tell them the truth, mm -hmm. speaking the truth in <coughs> love. Um, and of course, Ratio Christi, there's so many aspects to this ministry here on Crandall campus. Uh, I've been involved in their Monday uh, chapel times from like 11.30 to 12, where we could learn about more through Christ and the Bible and discuss what the Bible actually says about who Jesus was. Uh, and uh, we've had amazing speakers out to the Thursday night meetings. Uh, so those are a bit longer, but such an amazing <coughs> opportunity. Uh, and it's really just a place where people of different perspectives uh, can come together and talk about some of the issues that matter most in our lives. Uh, we've had talks from 10 things not to say to an atheist to um, why, why Jesus is the only way. Uh, why, why can't it be uh, the Islamic faith or the Buddhist faith or this? Like why, why do we argue that Christianity is the only way to heaven? Um, and uh, that just has been a really great uh, time where uh, I've disagreed with a lot of my uh, classmates. <laughs> um, <laughs> what do we call Rashu Christie members? Uh, just Rashu Christie members? <laughs> my friends. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what they are. They're, they're friends. I've disagreed with a lot of these friends on a lot of things. But uh, I've been able to learn to discuss my disagreements uh, in love. And that's a skill that we're not taught anymore. We're taught not to talk about politics or religion or any of these other things because it makes people feel uncomfortable. But what I think that we should really be doing is learning how to discuss these things in love and with respect mm -hmm. and in ways so that other ideas can be spoken about, but nobody is put down and nobody is cast aside for what they believe. And that's something that Rashi Christie really s excels in is teaching us how to disagree in love, uh, opening a respectful dialogue uh, on a variety of topics. Uh, one of the amazing things that we have at the Thursday Night Club meeting is people from so many different viewpoints uh, come and discuss, professionals, uh, doctors in their fields, uh, Skyping in or even showing up in person to talk about some matters of the faith uh, and issues that really matter for us as students today. Uh, we've had people on one end of the spectrum, and then the next week, the exact other, and then we get to hear both sides of those debates, and it's a wonderful opportunity to both see that everyone's intelligent and that everyone deserves respect for what they believe, uh, even if we might not agree with that. Um, yeah, so I got ahead of myself there. <coughs> Oh, I'll just leave that. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, one thing it has not taught me, unfortunately, is grace in <laughs> movement, but <laughs> I guess I'll have to deal with that uh, on my own. Uh, so, I'd like to thank you guys all for coming out today. Uh, the fact that you're here shows that you have a love for Christ, or not, that you have a not, uh, desire to learn more about the Christian faith. 
Uh, many of you, I'm sure, have a love for Christ, and other people might be looking, uh, especially those online. And uh, thank you for giving this a shot. Thank you for learn, coming out and trying to learn more about uh, something that's so valuable for me. Uh, and if you guys have any questions, I don't know how long I've been for time, but if you see me around, or if you want to ask me anything, there are three things that I love to talk about uh, here. Uh, one, my faith. Love to talk about my faith. Uh, I could do that for hours. Uh, the second is Crandall University and just uh, how great of an experience I've had here. And the third would be Rashford Christie and just what that's meant to me. Uh, so thank you for giving me your time, and uh, yeah, have a great day. Well, thank you very much, Mark. I hope you all enjoyed hearing a bit about the university and the testimony of one of our uh, students. And uh, I know he doesn't think so, but I see him as... Uh, one of our uh, prime examples of a successful Crandall student, as well, in my opinion, of a successful Ratio Christie student. Because what we do at Ratio Christie, and I'm going to talk a lot more about this this afternoon. I hope you guys can uh, stick around and or tune in to uh, hear me talk about that. But one of the things we do try to do with Ratio Christie is really equip our students and other people, obviously, since you know we're doing this event. Uh, but we really try to equip them to be able to have these discussions, whether or not you agree with one another, to have them in an attitude of gentleness and respect, to respectfully disagree, but yet be willing to have those open discussions to try to arrive at the truth together. So thank you once again for both Mark and Angela for coming up. We are going to take another short break before our next lecture. Just a couple of reminders. There is a Ratio Christie out, uh, table out there where you can sign up for our monthly electronic newsletter. And if you are new to signing up to the newsletter, you will be entered into a draw for a free copy of the new edition of the Apologetics Study Bible. We'll be doing that draw after the symposium. So if you are not on our newsletter yet, please go out, sign up for the newsletter so that you can have a chance to win that study Bible, as well as stay up to date about the ministry that we're doing here, as well as other special events like this symposium. And there's another draw happening at the canteen out there run by the theology students to raise money for their Cuba missions trip. So please go out and support them by <coughs> buying yourself a snack or even by giving a donation. And there are tickets for sale to be entered for a draw for a $50 Indigo gift card. So all that to say, we will be back at 11 a.m. Atlantic time to hear Daniel Cooper, future Dr. Daniel Cooper, uh, talk about the use and abuse of paganisms in the Bible. Sounds like a provocative topic. I'm excited. I have no idea where he's going with this. I know a little bit, but I do not want to give anything away. But the provocative title alone should be enough to draw you out to, to it. And uh, if you, I'm sure it'll generate some questions that you can then ask. Where can you ask questions? In the Q&A panel, right? So there is a table outside the room. If you have questions for the Q&A panel at the end of the day, you can write a question, put it in the mailbox outside the room. If you are watching online, you can write your questions in the comments section of the live stream video or message the Faith Seeking Understanding Symposium Facebook page and we will make note of your questions. We can't promise that all the questions will be answered but we are going to go through and pick the best one. So make sure your question's really good. <laughs> so with all that to say, we will be back in a short little while on my clock. I'm seeing, oh, we're five minutes ahead of schedule. Wonderful, it's wonderful. So you get a, about a 20 minute break. We will be back at 11 a.m. Atlanta time to hear uh, future Mr. Dr. Cooper uh, talk <laughs> about the use and abuse of paganisms in the Bible. Thank you.